What's up guys, it's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm glad you made it. Today we're gonna chat about organizing your photos and doing kind of a pre-photo session workflow, I guess, in Darktable. So mainly what I'm talking about is being able to go through your images and cull them, basically deciding which ones are good, which ones are crap, and which ones need to be deleted. So today we're gonna go through and talk about which photos I wanna keep, which photos I wanna delete, and I'm gonna give you guys a look at how I personally do that. Now, my caveat is every photographer is different, so this can look really different if you want it to, or you can do something that's kind of similar, but maybe tweak it a little based on what you need. So anyways, today we're just gonna take a look and I'm gonna show you how I do that. All right guys, here are my photos in Darktable so far. I imported these the other day. If you missed that video, check up here and I'm gonna put a link to it so that you can go back and watch it. That's how to import and export photos from Darktable. So start there, then come back here. The first thing that I usually will do is zoom in or out on this little window where I can tell what photos are good and what photos are bad. So you usually have to zoom in enough to actually be able to see them. You can do that using your mouse wheel. So all you're gonna have to do is hold down the control button on your keyboard and scroll your mouse wheel. If you scroll away from you, they zoom in and get bigger until you only have one on the screen. If you zoom towards yourself, they get smaller and then you can actually see that you have more. Okay, so let me go here so I'm just in this folder and you don't see those skull photos. <laughs> Okay, so these are the ones that I'm gonna go through and rank. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is up here in this collect images box. It's gonna show you, when you first log into Darktable, it's gonna look like this. All right, so you can come over here to collect images, click the drop down, and then you have a list of all of the folders that you've imported photos with. So if it looks like this, you can just click the little arrow beside um, the drive on your computer where these photos are saved. So this is actually an external hard drive that I have plugged in. This here, C, is usually like your co default computer hard drive. So if you saved them on your hard drive and they're like on your desktop or whatever, click C, look for them there. If you have an external like me, it may be labeled like E or D or J. There'll be a letter right here that tells you what drive it's on. All right, so mine are here and all of mine are in this photography pictures folder. And then I do have separate subfolders underneath of that. So I take photos for clients. Those are here. Uh, my photos from 2020 live here. And then I've got subfolders under that. So I do mine by year just on my hard drive to keep myself organized. So I can kind of think back like, okay, we went to the beach in 2018. The pictures I need are probably going to be in that folder. And it was maybe around June. That's kind of how I keep track of my folders and my photos myself. But you may have a totally different system go with what you use. These are the photos we're going to edit today. So I'm starting with 2020 dance recital. You can see there's 46 photos in here. I can double click this and it's going to show this whole folder here on the side. Now you may see something a little different. You may see film roll. You can view your images that you've put into Darktable this way if you prefer. Personally, I don't because Darktable, if I import a whole folder of photos and it has a bunch of subfolders under it, Darktable is going to give them all their own film roll. So I may have like 2020 and I've tried to import all of those photos together and Darktable has split them up into different film rolls for different stuff. Um, I find this just a little more confusing to look through because I have to look at the drive name and then the folder name and then the path. You can sort this however you want though. Okay, so you can click up here this little drop down and you can view your imported photos by folders. You can do it by just the file name and it's going to just give you a file name here. I wouldn't do that personally because I don't rename mine, but if you have a specific naming system, you may want to do that. If you name it like Jason's wedding and then a dash and then, you know, black and whites or whatever, and that's what you're looking for, by all means, organize it by file name and you'll be able to find what you're looking for. You can also organize them by camera, by lens by aperture, I mean, you can read these. There's tons of options. And I only wanna see the photos that I've imported from this 2020 dance recital folder. Okay, cause that's all I'm working with right now. So I'm gonna go through and edit these. You can also kind of set presets up here. If you wanna store a preset for something, you can do that. 
Um, same thing with collections, you can set presets for those. Okay, so over here on the right hand side, I am gonna show you one thing here that is helpful if you wanna use it, and that is the concept of tags. So there are some tags that I've already used on some of my photos. Um, these don't have any tags yet. So I can put tags in here that say all the things that I may wanna search for these images for later if I wanted to. So I can put the people's names that are in this photo. I can, this is my daughter. I can put her name here as a tag. I can put dance as a tag, ballet as a tag. 2020 as a tag. These are all ways that I can go back through and sort my photos again based on tags that I've given them. It's a lot more work on the front end to add tags to your photos, but it can save you a lot of time on the back end looking for specific images if you already have them tagged and you know like how to find them. We're not going to really go into tagging in this video because I'm not going to put any tags on these images here. These are just for my own personal use and I want to be able to throw one or two of them back to the dance studio as a thank you for letting us come and do the dance. So I'm not worrying about any of that right now and I'm not worrying about exporting anything right now. But just know if you want to be able to go through and add tags to your images you can do it over here under the section called tagging. So the first thing that I want to do is be able to actually see these images. So I'm going to zoom in, which you can do by holding down the control button and scrolling the wheel of your mouse. If you scroll away from you, it's going to zoom in. If you scroll towards yourself, it's going to zoom out. So I'm going to hold down control and zoom in until I only see a couple of images at a time. I like to be able to do that because it helps me see them a little bit better. Also, as a side note, if anyone experienced with dark table wants to tell me why my preview photos here are so pixelated i will love you forever i've asked it in a couple of different forums and no one seems to know so they show fine when i go over to the darkroom module and i like actually edit them but here for some reason they're really pixelated and this just started in version 3.2 so maybe a bug they're working on i don't know but regardless, ignore the fact that these look so pixelated. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start at the top. Basically what I'm gonna do is use the stars down at the bottom to determine how well I like the image and whether or not I'm probably gonna keep it. So I'm gonna start with these photos and I'm just gonna click on the first one and then I'm gonna use the numbers on my keypad to give it a rank from one to five. Now that is the keyboard shortcut for clicking on these stars. You can also just click on the stars if you wanted to. If you wanted to click and give it five stars and then click this one and give it five stars, you can. But for me, it's easier to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and then just a number. So I'm gonna like select this photo first. And then I'm going to give this one. I, so typically my star rating, it's different than anyone else's I've ever heard, but it works for me, it works in my brain. So it's what I use. I usually start with a star rating of zero. And if I like the image, I will give it a rating between three and five. Sometimes I come back and put ones or twos on the ones that I really don't like, but I may need to keep later. Um, but generally I start with a star of three, which is kind of like, eh, mediocre. I may come back to this one. And if it's really, really great, I'm gonna give it five stars. If it's kind of okay, I'll give it four stars. And if it's meh, I'll give it three. I don't even bother with two and one because I don't have time for that. I just leave those without any stars and I move on. So then what I do is come up here to the view and instead of having it set to all, I will go to unstarred only and I'll delete all those photos. Now, if these are images that are just for myself, I will typically delete them from Darktable and send them to the trash all in one fell swoop. If they're client photos, I will usually remove them from Darktable so they're not in my way, but unless they are really, really garbage, like it was just a test shot and there's no one in it, those I'll send to the trash. But if it still has photos of the family in it, sometimes I will mark them all as a one star so that I have them there and I can come back to them if I need to, or I'll just remove them from Darktable but leave them on my computer. That's kind of weird, but I do that because if someone ever contacts me and wants the extra photos later, I have them. Um, and there also have been occasions where I've wanted to go back and edit photos that I've edited before that maybe I thought were garbage. 
and just kind of see how far my editing skills have progressed. And sometimes I'll go back and re-edit photos that were severely underexposed or photos that are very overexposed just to kind of see if I can. So anyways, I'm gonna go through these and show you what I do. Okay, so I'm marking this one as a zero. I'm gonna mark this one as a four. For also side note for you guys, the numbers on my number pad never work for this, for rating photos. Even if the numlock key is on and I can use my number pad for other stuff, it never works for rating photos. I don't know why. So again, if you have a tip for that, you just yell it to me in the comments. Um, but I use one hand on my arrow keys and then the other hand on the one through four on the top number pad on my keyboard. So I'm gonna give this one a, I already kept the one before. She's got her eyes closed. No, they're open. Okay. So I'll keep that one. The backgrounds are overexposed in these, but that's what Filmic is for, so we're gonna give that a go later. All right, that one's a five. That one's a five. I'm kind of keeping most of these just because there's not that many and I don't have a lot of options to choose from here. Normally, like if these were client photos, I would be a lot pickier and I can show you guys a client session later. This one's got a massive sun flare, so I'm not loving that, but we'll keep, we'll keep one of them. That one obviously is one I would definitely trash and remove from darkroom altogether. So I'll show you guys how I do this really quick. I'll select that image and then I will come over here to selected images right here. And here's where you have options to remove the photo, which just takes it out of dark table, or I can trash it, which just sends it to the recycle bin on my computer. This is one I'm not keeping even outside of dark table because I hit the shutter button as I was putting my camera down. So I'm just gonna trash it. And then it gives me a confirmation. Do you want to send one image to the trash? I hit yes. All right, so moving on with selecting these. Okay, so I have the images selected that I really like. Now I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm going to view unstarred only. So I've picked the photos that I really love. These are the ones that weren't winners at all for me or duplicates of another photo that I already had. All right, so I'm gonna click the first one of these images, scroll all the way down to the bottom, hold down my shift key and click the last photo and that selects all of them. Another way you can do this is just select the first one and then hit control and the letter A and that's gonna select all of them. That's a keyboard shortcut for lots of programs, but we're gonna select all of these that are in this unstarred only category. And then I'm gonna come over here and trash them. Okay. You can also remove them if you want and just take them out of dark table, but they'll still be here. But I was pretty conservative with the ones that I didn't give a rating to. So I know these either already have a duplicate image or they're ones for sure I'm not gonna do anything with. So I'm gonna send them all straight to the trash gonna give me my confirmation yes I do all right now I get back to the screen that says there are no images in this collection which used to freak the crap out of me when I first started uh, yeah so if you get this screen after don't panic remember you need to come up here to unstarred only and change that back so I can change this back to view all of them or I can change it to only view the ones that I marked as four stars and then I can change this little greater than or less than sign here. So I can just see the ones that are greater than four stars. I can see the ones that are greater than or equal to four stars. Just the ones that equal four stars. Just the ones that don't equal four stars. You get a picture. You can figure this stuff out. So I'm going to select this to show greater than or equal to four stars. Now, I think there's one image that I did put three stars on. So I'm actually going to change this to three stars. Okay. One more thing I will tell you, I've seen other people who go through and sort their photos a little differently. And instead of leaving them as zero stars and getting rid of them, they mark them as rejected, which I think the shortcut for is just the letter R when you're on a photo. Let me see. 
I don't really want to reject one of these, but ah, yes, just the letter R, and it will reject the photo. So let me see all of the rejected. You can click the little X down here in the bottom left hand corner, or you can hit the letter R and it will reject the photo. Um, I don't want to reject this photo, so I'm going to hit R again. <laughs> okay, so I can come back up because I know I got rid of all the ones that aren't junk. Um, so I'm just gonna come back up here and view all because it's gonna show me all the photos. I can also mark it to view like four stars and then if I actually moved one down to like three stars when I started to look at it, it would just take it off this view. But I'm just gonna mark mine all for now and we'll go later from there. One other thing I wanna show you guys about the ways that you can view your photos here and this is helpful if you're trying to sort them quickly. This little star up at the top will let you change the type of overlays that you're showing on your images. This is pretty new for Darktable 3.2, I believe, or at least some of these are new. So I'm gonna go through these really quickly, but you can choose it to have no overlays, which is gonna remove the image information from below the photo. Or you can choose to only have overlays on mouse hover, which is only gonna show the star rating when I hover over it with my mouse. You can choose to do extended overlays on mouse hover, which basically gives all the information I was showing before, but only when I put my mouse over it. You can do permanent overlays, which just shows the star rating, permanent extended overlays, which shows the file name and then all your image information down here. Um, side note about that, all mine's going to show you is shutter speed and ISO, the other two are zero, my focal length and then my aperture. The reason for that is that I am free lensing with these photos, which is what you do when you don't have your camera lens screwed on all the way. I don't recommend that, don't be like me, but my lens is broken, that's the only way I can get it to work with my camera right now, so that's what I'm doing but that's why some of these are zero. It should show you all the image information if you are using your lenses as directed by your camera manufacturer. So again, don't be like me. All right, back to these. So overlays, then you've got two more. Permanent overlays extended on mouse hover, which is it just like overlays it on top of your image. And then the last one is overlays block on mouse hover during, and then you can do plus or minus an amount of time. This way is gonna put a block of text over top of your photo and it lasts for however many seconds you have chosen in the thing. So I have the number three, these will be here for three seconds. And then if I move my mouse again, it pops back up. It's kind of annoying to me, I don't really like that. So I leave mine on permanent extended overlays, shows me all the stuff just down at the bottom and then I don't have to worry about hovering over it for it to show up because I normally use my arrow keys when I'm going through to decide which photos I want to keep and which ones to get rid of. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for today as far as culling these photos and picking which ones I like and which ones I don't like. If you want to see the rest where I actually edit these photos, stick around for the next video because that's coming soon. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe to my channel down below. You know that helps me out. You guys know how YouTube works. Just kidding. All right. Thanks for stopping in. I'll see you later. Have a good day.